hi from afar. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? What are you drinking there? Uh, I mixed this crazy thing backstage um, that's um, like black coffee and this like horchata. Oh, no horchata thing. Talk dirty to me. Oh, well, that sounds I mean, delicious. You know, given the chance. But, yeah. <laughs> Let's get this party started. It started. It started. I need to congratulate you on the one that you love. Oh, I mean, thanks. this song came out last week and in a matter of days, <laughs> it has over a million streams on Spotify. The epic video, which I want to talk to you all about, <laughs> has over 2 million views on YouTube, mm -hmm. and you just surpassed over 3 million subscribers on the YouTube channel. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, that's a big week. That's impressive. That is a big week. It's funny. It doesn't, like, it, it, it you know, it just feels like every other week. It's How unbelievable. How crazy. <laughs> like, inside, right? in my own house. <laughs> it's a little Groundhog Day situation. Oh, totally. Yeah. Did you see that movie Palm Springs yet? Of course I did. Oh my God, so, so good. good. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was four months long. I know. So I could just forget my life. <laughs> I know, it's true. It was a very good one. It was fun. Um, how are you feeling about this initial response to the song? Uh, really good, you know, because it's so. I, I've. Um, I don't. I don't want to say I've mastered it because that, you know, that would be ridiculous. But um, I feel like I've gotten very good at the the, you know, low expectation thing. You know, because I feel like uh, it's just so dangerous. Right. Those expectations can be so dangerous. Well, I guess if you put out a song that you love, yeah. <laughs> then it's just yeah. sort of other people love it too. It's an added yeah. bonus, right? Yeah. I mean, I feel like um, just from even like uh, we just started performing it, you know, like I've yeah. literally only done it like uh, maybe three and a half times right now because we just did a little in soundcheck. But um, I'm like, oh, wow, it's really fun to sing, you know? It's, it sounded amazing. Thanks. In soundtrack, yeah, by I, the way. I, I'm still at that point where I'm so excited to sing it that I'm over singing it a little bit. I'm just like, Woo. No such thing. I can't no control myself. No. So I'll, I'll, I'll try to get under control by tomorrow. No, it, it sounds so <laughs> good. Um, I think what's also important to note is just the unbelievable global response to the song. You know, like, for example, in countries like Mexico, Turkey, Italy, France, the fan engagement has, engagement has been incredible. What do you think it is about your music that resonates with music fans of so many different languages and cultures? You know, I really don't know, but I think it's the um, emotional element, mm -hmm. you know? I think, um, I think uh, people can tell, um, you know, the place I'm singing from just innately, you know, yeah. I think they can like, um, you know, there's a, there's a, a definite uh, place that it hits you other than the lyric, you know, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big lyric person. I can't deal with, uh, you know, like without having, you know, a really good lyric behind a, a melody. But, um, but I think that that's part of it, you know? I think, uh, I think it's the element of surprise, you know, sometimes. I, you know, I always, like, joke about how, um, <laughs> like, when people heard Lost on You, they definitely didn't conjure up this person behind Lost on You. And they were like, oh, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's also just as a fan, your voice, it's so unique. And just listening to Soundcheck just now, I'm always surprised every time that you're able to also do that live. I mean, it's just, <laughs> besides just being a range, it's so many different textures and your voice oh, has so many different characteristics to it. It's really one it's of a It's a pain kind. in the butt, I'll tell you what, because <laughs> I'm really attached to every single one and I'm just like, hey, you missed that one. It's, that was a little off. <laughs> it sounds amazing. I'm Thank serious. You. Um, now, you wrote this song with Mike Del Rio and Nate mm -hmm. Campany, who's like your all-star writing team, yeah. with whom you also wrote Lost on You, yeah. which is one of my favorite songs in recent history. <laughs> um, tell me about the collaboration with you guys and, and what it is that's so unique about your chemistry that leads you to create such powerful music. Um, well, first of all, you know, it's like a deep friendship. I mean, I, both of them, I feel like I, I almost know them like... Uh, or I've known them in past lives, like a f in a family mm -hmm. way. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like you know, I used to joke before I knew Mike that well. I'd be like, he's just this, this really hip, cool, talented guy with like the kind of like with like the vibe of like your grandmother who loves you. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> come here. The warmth. Oh, you look so beautiful yeah. today. You're beautiful. <laughs> what are you wearing? What do you smell great? You know, like oh, I was like, wow. You know, Aww. and then and he's just so lovely and uh, but without being like a you know a pushover. Like he you know. This man is not like, you know, he doesn't like just say yes. He's not a yes man, but he's just like <laughs> a nice man. But Aww. he's, uh, you know, he, um, I think, and Nate, you know, is very similar. Like Nate is kind of, uh, Nate is just like, you know, he's like a, a Berkeley 
trained, like ear trained guy. He, he's that guy that goes like, yeah, this is great. What if you change that chord to like, you know, uh, something diminished minor flat six? <laughs> you know, you're like, <laughs> you're like, and then all of a sudden uh, you listen to it, you're like, wow, wow, that's the best thing I've ever heard. You know, and so they they just bring, um, you know. Um, both musical knowledge with with soul, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I'm kind of uh, besides like you know uh, vocally having trained myself, I'm kind of like you know autodidactic, as they say, mm -hmm. you know? as many people say, lots of people say, <laughs> um, you know, like I'm mean, like self-taught, like for the most part, like everything else. So um, I feel like um, we just um, and there's a lot of. Uh, you know, I, I used to call it like Nate does this thing. I, I call it like uh, the tail wag. You know, like if I'm like like you know sing a melody or say a lyric, and he's just like, he gets that like look on his face, like 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 a proud parent or something yeah. like that. It just makes me go. Oh, you like that? Oh, you okay. like that? Yeah, it's a positive Let me do reinforcement. More of that. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, so that's sweet. a very important thing because I've been in so many sessions. I, you know, I've written with so many people, and uh, you know, I've had the, <laughs> you know, the the frying pan on the head version, like you're soaring, and someone's like, you yeah. know, like I don't like that, you know. And then uh, it reminds me of those old screensavers with all the colors. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> and it was yeah. like, like that, and then it's just like click. Off, right. you know, they just like they stop you from like soaring like that, and we don't do that to each other. And and then we've gotten very intuitive as it's gone on, as far as um, where that person's going and to guide it and to help it and to um, uh, you know celebrate it in a way that makes something happen. I think that Mike has also um, you know been just such a you know he's such a producer, and so is Nate. That's the thing yeah. with both producers. On this new record, I'm gonna have a couple songs that um, I started with Nate and his. Um, uh, production partner Kyle Shearer and they, you know so the, we um we also got a couple of amazing songs like the first two songs we ever did you know um that uh I think people really like and uh so I'm basically uh, working with these two separate but equal producers and um and they just understand me like I think and we're kind of going deeper into a sound for me that's like um you know it's like I, I always call us a band yeah in a way like my band of course away from uh the stage and it's true. We really have a, um, you know, we're on our like, you know, third record or something like that. You know, maybe fourth record. We did um, "Night Like This" on "Forever mm -hmm. For Now." Yeah. Uh, one of my records. That was the first, one of the first songs we ever did. We did a song before that called "Lightning." That's on a um, Milan Farmer record. Mm -hmm. So basically, we're we're like, you know, we're like a hundred for a hundred. I <laughs> love like, that. Yeah, it's nice. So. Has your relationship with them evolved, you know, through time, or is it sort oh, of yeah. like instant chemistry between it was, you guys? It was instant. Um, I think, you know, we all had respect that, you know, I've heard the story that, you know, uh, Nate wanted to work with me. I didn't even know. And he was like bugging because we're managed by the same group, but mm -hmm. separate, um, kind of separate people. And um, yeah, we all kind of wanted to like work together. And um, and it just started going. I think there's just like this, um, it's kind of like, a, you know, I don't know if you played sports, but um, I have. And I yeah. feel like you were always like, I feel like usually the most popular person on the team was one of the best people on the team often mm -hmm. you know like yeah. it just seemed like like the the best people kind of hung out i feel like we're like a team like that like I we love all that. respect um each other's like talent and abilities and it just adds to this um this beautiful vibe of like creation um i just feel really lucky you know i love that yeah. wait what sports did you play by the way i'm intrigued by oh this. soccer yeah yeah love that <laughs> and and softball i got forced to play softball because my um my um my science teacher was a softball coach and he was a real jerk so i was just like <laughs> I pressured you into the softball. Yeah, I, was, I, I yeah, I, I couldn't stand him, and I can't stand him. I'll never stand him. But like, but I played softball, and that was fun. That's he fun. used to make me play third base and just like, like bat the ball into my face all during That's nice. practice. It was nice. Great. It was Thanks good. so much for that. Yeah, maybe, maybe, um, maybe strong. <laughs> it's right, stronger. <laughs> yeah. um, let's dive a little deeper into the song itself and how it's about needing love and how we first need to turn inward mm -hmm. and lead by example by loving ourselves. I, I love that message. Just tell us more about the song uh, and the message behind yeah, it. Yeah, the song, like, that's the thing. I've, I've been happy with uh, people um, getting the gist of it, you know, like how to be the one that you love. Um, I wanted to call it the, the whole thing, but it's a little wordy, you know, <laughs> to be the title. But it just, like, it brings up the point that, you know, we are... Are, um, you know, um, we're all, we're constantly, even in our, I find, I don't know if everybody has this, but even on our deepest relationships, we sometimes don't know if we're like kind of um, being understood on every level and, and, and really getting, you know, commanding that person's um, uh, attention and, and love and 
deep like respect um, all the time. Like sometimes, you know, how many times have you heard someone be like, we were together for like 10 years and I found out that, you know, and then they said, I, 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 I've had people that have been like, I, I don't love you anymore and I don't know if I ever loved you. Like wow. not to me, <laughs> I've, yeah. I've been lucky like that, but I've had friends that have like gone through that. I'm like, that's wow. deep. <laughs> that, yeah. that is like so, so dark and deep. And, and, and I think that you're always like, you know, I think after my, um, you know, first major relationship kind of uh, dissolved, I felt like, and it was my choice, but I felt like I really was like, wow, if I could break up with this person who was so amazing and so, so great, anybody could do that to me, you know, mm -hmm. like in a way. And I think the more like you have like these very serious relationships, you kind of can see that, um, you know, you're always vulnerable, you know, you're always like, you never know. And, and I think people really respond to that. And, and I really respond to that. It's like kind of a fascination for me. And I write about it a lot because, um, you know, as much as like, you know, we're not alone, we're alone, yeah, you know, and you absolutely. have to, you know, you always have to kind of like, you know, invest in a, in a, a new future or like another, mm -hmm. like, you know, and I, and I feel like it's, you know, um, you know, the brevity of life in general, you know, and, yeah. and I, I feel like I've had, um, you know, both my parents pass and I, I feel like I, I kind of understand that like, things aren't forever in a way, mm -hmm. but like you always want them to be. I mean, that's yeah. what marriage is about. Forever! <laughs> right. It's forever. <laughs> is it though? <laughs> you know? Okay. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. That's something that we can all relate to. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about the video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. So it was directed by Darren Craig, who's yeah. done beautiful videos for Rihanna and Shakira and Kesha. Yeah. And it was at the Big Sky Ranch, which yeah. is where, like, Westworld, yeah. Little House in the and Prairie. I'm, I'm in the middle of, like, second season of Westworld. Oh, so it's amazing. I was in that barn, and I was like, wait, did she? Right. Did this a recurring thing? Like, yeah. I won't give it away, but, like, yeah. I was just like, ooh, that's dark. Yeah, that's super dark. Super dark. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I was like, wow, okay. That, but that's so cool that you shot that and, and are not caught up on Westworld. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, totally. I was like, wow. And, uh, and we got to see the, the house. You know the house that she, like, uh, this isn't really giving it yeah. away, but the house that she, she goes, bye, Papa, you know, yes. like every day yeah. with the porch. We, we were sitting, like, in that house, like, not in it. On the porch, or that's whatever. so cool. Yeah, it was really wild, and uh, and just that area. I I I don't think I wrapped my head around it that we were going to go to that area because the way um, I thought Darren described it, I you know I don't listen sometimes, like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm oh, sure I'll be there. Yeah. Five o'clock, great. Five, five a.m. Sounds good. Great. Sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like a video. And uh, and I thought it was going to be mostly like uh, kind of uh, super imposed kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, and then I was like, oh wow, we're like really in like you know we we got a scene going here, you know, and. Uh, yeah, and I hadn't ridden a horse in a while. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you about that because your yeah. skills were on point. Yeah, I, yeah, it was a like, Yeah, it was you know, pretty impressive. I, I, the the um, the handlers were like, "Oh, yay! Someone who's actually ridden a horse before," you know, just because they, they're like, "You wouldn't believe what happens." So I'm like, "I'm sure." Well, I can only imagine. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. You can't just hop on a horse. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you have to feel confident, know a thing or two. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, very basic stuff. But my mom had a horse for a while, and yeah. and um, so I, you know, and I I rode a lot when I was a kid. Kid. Um, but uh, I wanted to like get going, you know. I don't, I don't really. I'm not. I wasn't. Um, if I had like, if I had known for a while that we were, I would have like kind of brushed up a little bit, you know, so uh, I could like kind of take off on it, you know. Right. But uh, but yeah, I think the handlers would have been like, no, right, right, <laughs> stop. But uh, we uh, we had some good moments, and the the horse whose name is Madara. I love Everybody that. keeps it kind of cracks me up because it's like uh, my girlfriend's ex-boyfriend's name is Makdara. <laughs> so, oh. so I was <laughs> like, very close. <laughs> uh, anyway, I don't, that, I don't feel that way at all. But it was just funny to me. So I right. remembered his name, like you know, I was Madara. Like, Madara. I love that. Anyway, so um, I. Um, I could see he was giving me like side eye in the beginning, and then I kind of got a relationship Aww. with him, and he was this is lovely. It's you know horses are such a different vibe than other animals. You know, yes, I yeah. like a dog this big, so it's just kind of like animal energy, but like gigantic. Of course, it's a beautiful beast. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's a beautiful. It's beast. a beautiful beast. It's like its whole own <laughs> yeah. entity. Yes. Yeah. 
and they totally can feel your energy and everything. Yeah. So you need oh, to be yeah, like totally. confident. Yeah, and, and then the they get thing. cool and like, you know, if you're like kinda like cool with riding them, um, they get like relaxed and he, right. he was a lovely creature and uh I don't know, I just like, you know, Darren had the idea for the horse because we were talking about, um, you know, things we could do in quarantine that were mm -hmm. like kind of could keep the distance and all the stuff. And we talked about a car and I'm just like, I'm just so sick of seeing cars and videos and being, I've done right. one, you know, like that. And I just was like, it just didn't feel special. And um, I was like, I remember we left the conversation, like, I was like, oh, yeah, like a motorcycle? I mean, anything, a jet ski. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, like a three-piece suit, like jet skiing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. But, uh, and then Darren called back, and uh, he was like, what about a horse? And I was like, that is so cool. Yeah. I, I would love that. And so, um, you know, um, put it into works, and then, boom. And I don't know, it just felt really, it felt very natural, you know. You looked so natural. Thanks. I really was so impressed. Thank it's not, you. not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't, like, I'd like to see a blooper video of, like, other people that have, like, <laughs> That's what I'm like tried and failed. Right. So I don't know. I only know myself. You right. know what I mean? It was, it was, it was and I was like, cool. just don't look like a spaz. Please. No, you looked so effortlessly <laughs> cool. Thanks, Allison. And also your outfit. Please talk oh, about Oh, thanks, that. man. I mean, yeah. you were magnificent. Yeah. Oh, the thanks. suit, the hat, the whole thing. <laughs> um, I had, uh, you know, that the, the jacket is like a YSL jacket mm -hmm. or whatever. And, uh, and the pants my tailor made, like, my my tailor um, uh, from Denim Revival uh, makes all these these uh, jeans for me, and uh, thank God she made these really stretchy white jeans because it was like you know I had to flat put my leg over my head to get on the hook. Yeah, <laughs> like, absolutely. You gotta be flexible. Race yourself in sound. It was like, <laughs> but I had like you know like this like very stretchy white pants on and and it worked, and uh, I was like thankful for that, but. Yeah. They're beautiful and functional. Yeah. <laughs> Can you exactly. still rock them now? I exactly. feel like white stretchy pants should be like, worn all the yeah, time. Yeah, like Under Armour is going to start making uh, <laughs> <laughs> double-breasted <laughs> suits to work out in. You know, I'm just like, go to the gym. Like, when we can finally go to gyms, I don't go to gyms, so yeah. I won't see it. But you might see it. And just people running on the treadmill in a, right. a double-breasted white <laughs> Right. I love it. I love it. Uh, um, let's talk about the significance of this live stream for a second. I mean... In a normal year, you're on the road over 200 days, and yeah. your entire 2020 tour had to be re rescheduled for 2021. <laughs> um, you know, the, the significance of this live stream is that you're, you're enabling all of your fans worldwide to come together and share this concert, which yeah. is a special thing. Why was that so important for you? Uh, just because I think, you know, that's the thing we're missing the most is like... Um sharing time with other people, mm -hmm, yeah. you know? Um, uh, and I mean, you know, I think about, like, God, what if this had happened when we were kids? Like, you know, it's like when we didn't have FaceTime and all I this know. stuff. I know. Like, we'd been I on Instagram that. and all that. Like, we've been so cut off. Like, TikTok, I mean, you know, like... I think TikTok and the other yeah. gaming. Yeah, I'm like, what are you going to play? Super Mario Brothers one time? And right? Then <laughs> I can see people juggling plates in the house, and I feel closer <laughs> to God through that. But, I, right. you know, it's like very... Um, you know, it's like we're we're much more communal now, mm -hmm. but um, but you know, I mean, I think everybody's really going stir crazy a bit and, yeah. and wanting to feel that rush of um, of um, connection mm -hmm. to um, to watching something together. Yes. You know? um, and uh, you know, and I and I, you know, at first I was like, oh God. Can we just tape it first, <laughs> and then I can look at it and be like, okay, take my song out, <laughs> cut that, <laughs> you know. Next that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, don't let that camera. No more of that camera angle, <laughs> you know. But um, but then I was like, yeah, you know, like whatever. I'm gonna like, you know, like kind of um, flaws and all. Like go for it, and I'll I'll feel more like, you know, holy crap. Uh, like I got this has got to be good if it's live. So, right. You know, I think it, it'll be. Uh, I think it'll be like a nice. Um, respite from being so like kind of cut off from yeah. people. Well, I will tell you, just as a music fan, you know, not being able to see live shows is torturous. Obviously, it's torturous for the artists and the crew, and everyone is affected by venues, everything. Mm -hmm. But for music fans to be able to see a live show is yeah. so medicinal and, and yeah. so therapeutic and to also be able to bond with other fans from around the world is such a special yeah. thing so thank you yeah, yeah thank you um you know i'm also like you know i feel so terrible for everybody that's out of work you know yeah, i know like, um you know even like you know this kind of scene like because usually when i'm see my stuff i'm like I'm like, oh, we're about to go on tour you know and it's yeah. like i have to like you know i'm like quarterizing those feelings i'm like nope stop it 
it's a one-off. Right. <laughs> you know? Well, do you think this will actually change the way you feel about playing live when this is all done? Well, you know, yeah. I mean, I have to say, like, as much as I love the uh, the living room mm -hmm. thing, I feel like, you know, I, like, busted my ass, like, get it, like moving up from that, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, for sure. And then I was like, oh, mm. uh, Back in yeah. the living room. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, uh, by popular demand. Um, but yeah. Which is special too. It in, is. In an it's intimate very special. Way. That's yeah. the thing. I don't want to like poo poo that. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's like a beautiful thing. And you know, I mean, especially like, you know, for me, like if I like see someone, like, you know, like in the beginning, seeing like, you know, uh, uh, geez, I, I just j knocked his name out of uh, John, um, great guitar player. Oh my God. Uh, John Mayer? John Mayer. Yeah. I, suddenly I was going John Stamos and I was like that's not right. also talented in other ways <laughs> also yeah. beautiful to handsome look at. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and he's just so funny and so insanely talented that like seeing him in his living room is kind of a thrill right for me. It is. I don't, you it know is. Maybe, maybe we have people that think that on the other side for me but I'm like oh god but it's nice to be fully um, yeah fully stocked because I don't have any problem doing pared down stuff in fact, right I'm looking forward to uh this next record, I'm gonna, you know, I think do something that's like pared down as a as a special, even on a, as a tour, you know, so at some point. But um, but yeah, I'd like to do it when I want to do it instead of like <laughs> right being forced to do yeah. it. Yeah. When I walked in the set today, I was like, oh my god, there's lights, yeah. there's instruments, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. There's different layers, levels. Yeah, yeah. and it's even like you know, because I've been singing, um, you know, I was practicing the new song, the one that you love. Yeah. Um, and. Um, you know, when I when I'm wailing in my in ears in it, it's just like a whole nother experience. <laughs> like yeah. In the microphone, I'm like, this is more fun. This is what I'm talking about. By the way, you just whistled for one second. Yeah. You are the strongest whistler in history. I mean, I, I know that <laughs> you're a strong funny. whistler, but then we're just yeah. watching it again in the sound check. I mm. mean, that is impressive. Oh, thanks. I mean, I need to know more about the whistle. Well, <laughs> the, you know, it's funny. I got really strong at doing it. And there's been there's been days, you know, it's it's interesting. I could always tell when I'm dehydrated when the whistle is just like... <laughs> <laughs> it's a weak whistle. Yeah, it, yeah, totally. It's just like, I'm like, oh, no. That can't be good for the voice. Like, you know, like that means my voice is like really right. dehydrated. But right. yeah, I, I feel like, uh, I feel like especially the Into the Wild whistle for some mm -hmm. reason, I got really good at making that one sound like so forced, like... You know, like yeah, it's like it's like the one that like when like um like a fan like a, if a woman fan brings her her reluctant hu husband, that's when he goes. Yeah, it's the re reluctant husband puller. <laughs> They're like, oh, all right, okay. The whistle gets him every time. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, I, I mean it is impre times. I'm impressed yeah. every time I hear it. It's amazing. <laughs> Do you have to work on that and strengthen that? Is uh, that like it just kind of happened over time, you know what I mean? Like, um, <laughs> you Are know, oral I mean, exercises? Again, again, with the, the audience, you don't want to see the faces of people when, like, you're, you're <laughs> making the whistle face and, like, something really lame is coming out. They're just like... <laughs> <laughs> Nothing worse than a weak whistle. Yeah, no, sorry, you got to commit to doesn't it. Doesn't bode well. Right, for, does not bode for well for the mouth skills. <laughs> doesn't not not a not a um a date puller. Let's it's say not a date puller. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love this. <clears throat> um, when you wrote "Heart to Mouth," <clears throat> switching gears for a second. You were writing that in the midst of all of the mayhem surrounding the success of Lost on You. You know, I mean, that was such a wild time for you. I mean, that song <laughs> went nuts. It was, you know, top of the charts in 13 countries. It has 330 million streams on Spotify. But most importantly, it's just one of the most iconic songs. It's an instant classic. I, I love that song. Um, in contrast, when you sat down to write this album, I think it's a whole new world. Yeah. You know, you actually had a second to breathe and regroup I, and focus. I did and I didn't because I th thought I had most of the record uh, before we just we found out about this. So because I thought it was just going to be the same thing right. again. So, you know, um, I just kind of just constantly write all wow. the time. Even now, you know, I'm still, you know, I'll, I mean, I'll, I think I'll always be writing. I don't go into like, I do take these trips. I, I, I've been going on these trips um, uh, with Mike and Nate and then also with some other people, um, you know, blended into the mix. Uh, my guitar player, Alex, we wrote a song on the next record. And, uh, you know, I um, I just feel like it like kind of like focuses on that, you know, sometimes. But, 
but I, 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 you know, in light of quarantine, I have written a few more songs that like seem like really, you know, oh wow, you know, like this is gonna get on the record too, you know. So I just been feeling very creative. I kind of got, um, you know, when I when I did my stint as a songwriter only, mm -hmm. I truly didn't think that I had another uh, bite at the apple, as they say, for a, an artist career yeah. again. So um, I remember <clears throat> treating it very kind of like an opportunity and very seriously. And I was like, you know, doing two sessions a day and, and really, um, you know, um, kind of like um, being on it, you know? And, yeah. um, and, you know, there was no like, are you inspired today? You're inspired? Right. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm so glad. Oh, it's good. Get in the room. Give me a song <laughs> for whoever, you right. know what I mean? And like, it yeah. wasn't very, you know, you weren't like coddled yeah. like an artist, you know? And so I got, you know, pretty good at like, you know, gun to your head songwriting, I call mm -hmm. it. And, um, and I just carried that over into my artist life. Like, I don't feel like, you know, I always tell people when, um, they ask like what advice you give to like, you know, younger artists or whatever. And, um, I just say that, you know, just write songs, keep writing songs. Cause right. first of all, they, they bring you to like, they just keep peeling away the onion at the core of like who you are as an artist. It's mm -hmm. gonna like show you, it leads you to it, I believe. And I also think that, you know, if you have a hit song, what does everybody want? Another hit song. Right. There's right, no right, like, right. hey, here's your Medal of Honor. <laughs> now go off into the into the life yeah, and, enjoy. and just you, you yeah. know, like you, you get you get a pass right. for life. That's You're right. good. Go ahead, yeah. go forth. You know, you just need to keep writing mm -hmm. songs. And you know, even like uh, you know, heart to mouth. I felt very like uh, one of the things I wanted to accomplish with heart to mouth was that I just wanted to, you know, put out more material and and also kind of not try to be like not take a, like ten swings at, at at making another lost on you. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to like because I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to write a hit song for the sake of writing a hit mm -hmm. song, you know what I mean? I, I enjoy I enjoy pop songs, you know? Yeah. I enjoy pop sensibility, but I'm, you know, all about uh, a diverse body of work, and right. I'm, you know, I'm always trying to explore that, you know? I think this new record has a lot of sounds and a lot of uh, vibes that um, I haven't, um, you haven't seen from me yet, which is exciting. You That's know? so exciting. Yeah. Can you tell us more about that? Like, were there any sort of influences or muses for this new album? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, even like, you know, making this song and uh, uh, the one that you love, uh, we, when we went to Cabo in Mexico, we were really inspired. We went to this cool uh, hotel called El Gonzo Hotel, yeah. and they're very artist friendly. And um, and we really, uh, you know, we took full advantage of uh, our surroundings as far as being in Mexico and, and soaking up all, all the things, you know, the culture there. Um, you know, even like the the one that you love has a, a ranchero kind of, um, you know, leanings to it. And mm -hmm. that was mainly because um, we got inspired across the street at a restaurant called George's um, by this man that was playing live music there. And he was like, you know, kind of had that vibe. And, and then Mike, you know, went up and started like noodling around on guitar and just, you know, me and Nate started thinking of things and, um, you know, and the, not a tune, what do you want to, <laughs> just popped out and we were like, oh, we were all just popped you know. out. Yeah. No big deal. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, so, um, but then we had, um, oh gosh, I'm going to forget his last name, but uh, this man, Yasmil, uh, Ma, Ma, uh, God. you can look it up, Yasmil Ma, Mafero, Mafa, uh, Ma, uh, I'm forgetting it, but, um, because I just call him Yasmil, you know, right. trying That's not all you to, need like, to know. Yeah, yeah. One name. Yes, <laughs> but uh, he like he like chimed in on some songs. We had him. Um, up, he's from Ecuador. We had him come out, and um, we got some really cool like flavors of his playing, you know. And uh, I don't know. It's been, um, you know, we just let it fly with like, and there's a lot of like very dancey kind of stuff. Um, you know, kind of. Uh, there's some uh, songs that I'm using my voice in. Uh, a little bit of a different way, so uh, cool. just a little softer here and there. And I don't know, I'm excited, but it's like, it's definitely some things that I, I know people haven't heard that I'm excited. It's so exciting. Yeah, we'll see. I'm also interested just to know your, who you grew up listening to, like who inspires you, what you eat or what you put on. Just sort of you as know, your go-to. I got or... so, uh, like, when I was little, like, my mom was just kind of, not sheltering with music, but, like, you know, my parents weren't, like, the radio. Like, my mom, you know, like, my mom would just be, like, 
kind of wanting to hear show tunes and stuff right. like that, like, you know, and um, and opera. And my dad liked, like, Johnny Cash oh. and stuff like that. So, that's you great. know, maybe that's why it's like the Ranchero thing appeals to me, because it's like operatic cowboy kind of stuff. Pretty and, amazing. I mean, I think, uh, you know, Queen was, like, one of the first things. Um, I was over at a friend's house when I was, like, six after soccer practice or something like that, and I was, like, I was, like, in the pool, and, and they were just, you know, playing stuff, and they played a Queen record, and I remember hearing, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody, and I was like, what in the hell right. is that, you know? Totally. And uh, so um, I've always been, like, Beatles, Stones kind of classic, mm -hmm. but, you know, I love Nirvana, and I love Green Day, and I love the... Um, Jeff Buckley, uh, you know, massive Jeff Buckley yeah. fan. Yeah, did massive. you hear me say yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. Does he not? I, like that was the, I was hysterically laughing. <laughs> he looks exactly like that. Best call. Best call. Uh, I was yeah. like, I think does he have an onk tattoo somewhere? <laughs> or, you know. I love that. Yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, you know, Jeff Buckley, uh, to me, was mm -hmm. like, you know, like a light in the dark as far as um, you know, more contemporary of a thing that where like you could. Uh, mix um, like this like kind of like you know um, operatic vocal in, yes. in rock besides Freddie Mercury obviously right. but but you know and there's like a um, um, he has this element to his voice that I I, I I always like felt like was too much like with me like when I would sing sometime like this histrionic kind of like you know, are you alright <laughs> kind of thing you know like you're, you're okay right, right. You know, Are you meaning to do that? Yeah, yeah. Um, and and I, and he gave you know made it okay and and beautiful and um, so I don't know I think he um, and he, you know he was definitely like kind of left of center and he had mm -hmm. a he had a vibe you know and I and I, I loved that about him. I'm so happy to hear you say this because firstly Grace is one of my favorite albums of all yeah. time. I think Grace is a perfect album from yeah. start to finish. Yeah. But you do remind me of Jeff Buckley. No way. You, you do oh, that's really so because cool. I think just because both of you are in a league of your own. Oh, thanks. You're you're totally you know genreless. Yeah. Um, and kind of doing your own thing and vocally yeah. also he is oh, one thanks. of the greatest vocals. You are one of the greatest vocals. So I Thank love you. that you love Jeff Buckley as I was Thank you. Oh yeah, he's a massive yeah. inspiration, and. Uh, yeah, I wish we could drink together now. I know. Which I think we also could, probably could do on par. <laughs> uh -oh. Terror. Um, but um, uh, who is, oh, have you heard, I keep talking about this guy, but I love him. Uh, this guy, Tamino, have you heard of him? No. So he's like uh, T-A-M-I-N-O, and uh, he's from Belgium. Okay. And he, they're calling him like the Belgium Jeff Buckley. And uh, and he, uh, get the record, Amir, it's his okay. first record. Um, he was the last show I saw before uh, quarantine. And it was like it was like that, ni that night that you weren't supposed to like, it was just like, uh, Oh, it was like. Yeah, and I was like, I'm never going to see this kid in this smaller room again. Right. And I think it was sold out at the Masonic Lodge mm -hmm. on Hollywood Cemetery. Cool venue, yeah. And uh, yeah, and he's, he reminds me, actually, he never gets up to, speaking of the histrionic thing, he never he never goes that that crazy right um but he goes high you'll see and uh, he also uh has a low end to his voice that's very uh and the way he writes is very leonard cohen wow so um and it's you know it's also like grace a great record to talk to <laughs> you know what i'm saying yes yeah it's a good yes. it's a good sex record it's it's just perfect good. yeah it's got an arc it's got the whole thing you know this is like the best takeaway hey, i can't wait to hear it i know it's you're amazing. like she was great but she <laughs> Next, like, all of a sudden, like, Tamino's sitting here, and I'm like... I'm, like, obsessed with Tamino now. Floundering yeah, out. I love nowhere. that. Nowhere. <laughs> so that was the last show you saw. Um, what else have you been... Have you been watching anything in quarantine? Anything that um, you've been... You know, a little Westworld. Um, yeah. I watched... Uh, <laughs> Oh man, I mean, Mike actually hit me to this. Have you seen that show, Alone? No. <laughs> oh God. All right, it's like, this is one of his favorite shows and he also really likes Naked and Afraid, which I haven't gotten to that yet, but Alone, uh, it's like, I only watched the sixth season and it's on Netflix. Uh, the rest of it's on Hulu, I think. But it's like, and it's such a nice, it's like, not a documentary, not about all the stuff that's going on, you know, right now. It's an escape, but without being, like, kind of grossly frivolous escape. Because right. it's, like, basically ten people um, are in, like, the Arctic on this one. And they can only bring ten things. And then they have to, you know, kind oh. of build shelter and, and do all this stuff. And, and the scope of it is really interesting. And it's, like, I, th I feel like it's, a like, a deep uh, character study of, like how people deal with um life in right. general it's really good so i've been watching that that's really cool yeah and um i don't know you know uh palm springs yes i watched <laughs> that as well yeah so. yeah i'm obsessed with true crime so like the new oh, unsolved really? mysteries is uh, back which sometimes is it gets so dark for me it is but dark. um you it know it's dark 
Yeah. I, I do enjoy it though, and I, I love documentaries. So I, yeah, I love me to too. learn. So yeah, any documentary, like, I will watch it. I will watch it on anything. I didn't watch it. I really want to watch the John Lewis one. Yeah, I, I have to watch it. I, have to I watch just want to. I really. We've been dealing with this stuff, and I just really want to like absorb every. Yes. Sentence of that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Um, I'm so excited about the new music. Thank you. Um, what do you hope, you know, what role do you hope your music plays in today's world? You know, how do you hope it resonates with your fans? Uh, you know, I don't want to get too lofty mm -hmm. for it, you know, but just like, uh, you know, just some solace, you know, yeah. maybe, and just, um, you know, take people from, you know, the quietest emotion to, you know, screaming their heads off in the car, yeah. you know. I think, um, I just feel like there's something about uh, music that uh, is healing, you know. It yeah. really does kind of put you back together sometimes. And, um, you know, I always like, I'm a broken record about connection, but I do feel yeah. like it's a connection thing. And, um, and even, you know, I feel like my fans often, you know, say that they found their people through, oh. you know, my music and, like, it connects people as far as, like, you know, it's like uh, people liking a certain movie or a show, and they feel like, oh yeah, because you like that. We have a we have Community, a, something yeah. together, and uh, I love that aspect of it. And and you know, just uh, ultimately, uh, even a connection through um, ages. You know, like mm -hmm. I feel like I have a vast age group. Yeah. It, you know, and I've had families come up to me, and you know. Uh, little kids and old men and you know everybody in between so um i'm just you know and and uh, you know a level of consistency that's why i'd like to like you know keep on you know kind of evolving as a songwriter and keep on putting out songs because i i feel like um it's um it's nice to like to know when you go to this person's work that you're getting you know what what you want or expect and then a little more you know I always try to push it I don't think I'll ever I'm not really one of those artists it's like oh you like that good I'm going over here <laughs> You're gonna come. I don't right, care if you right. come. Pivot. I don't care yeah right, I don't totally. I, I'm not a, a pivoter you right. know what I mean I'm a I'm snowball a baby I'm a non -pivoter. I do snowballing I'm like come on <laughs> let's go oh that's beautiful yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for your beautiful heart and for being such a unifier of diversity. It's really what you are. Uh, thank really. you. That is well said. I, she said it. I mean, you, you are, though. You could cut that part out. You, take two. I mean, unifier You're, of diversity. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, and, and you're, you're allowing us to celebrate all of this, you know, with this special performance. And, yeah. and thank you for having me be thank part of you. it. It's awesome. I appreciate you very much. So thank excited. You. Thank you. I appreciate your whistling. Should we talk about, like, what a, what a stud you are for a second? <laughs> Head of a global Spotify of rock. Oh. Everyone. You know, I, had a, I had a guy, do um, you know Charlie Overby? Yeah, of yeah. course. He called me this morning. He's like, hey, can you talk? He's like, how'd that uh, Allison thing go down? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Managers. She liked me. He's like, he's like, she's amazing. She's really cool. She helped me out. She's really cool. Oh, that's really yeah. nice. Yeah. I am like a, a, a rock and roll missionary. I, I, I love <laughs> nice. rock, alternative, whatever you want to call it, unkind semantics. I, I love yeah. great music and I love to be able <laughs> to What is the uh, rock and roll missionary position? Can you, can you tell us? <laughs> it's open to interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. <laughs> See the diagram after. Exactly. The show. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, but thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Great. I love you for that. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. Ah, yeah. uh, no, I'm I'm like I'm just I love everything you do. I think you're hilarious. Oh, you're thank so you. Funny. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I I, I tr like that's why I didn't want to like talk to you before because totally. we just would have been like No. You know. No, they're like, hello, so much my honey, hello my baby and then <laughs> <laughs> nothing. <laughs> totally. Are we done? Yeah, I think it might still be walking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Well, I won't tell that joke I was going to tell you. Are we done? To be yeah. continued. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right.